This edition of Water Horse. We're gonna we're gonna show a little everything today, but that'll work. Well, we got to show some shoe in. We're gonna go through that because that's very important. But we're also gonna explain some of this. I'm getting tired of listening to some of the reporters on the news the way they describe things. Yes, it's kind of out in left field. You're right. Matter of fact, right. it ain't even in. It's out, out in the stands. The stands it's way it's out. Way way out. Way out. Mm -hmm. But you do your deal and then we'll get started. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KB Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book, too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Seabring and see what being number one is all about. Remember the winner's circle. You got the gift shop, you got knives, you English saddles and accessories, English and cutback, Western and trooper saddles and accessories, complete line attack, bits, spurs, training aids, stable supplies, grooming medication, horse clothing, riding apparel, accessories, and footwear. While you're in town, go down to Winter Circle and tell them what a horse sent you. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams, our obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also, remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. All right, we got a few announcements to make. One of them is the Penny Roy coming up March 3rd and 4th in Oak Grove Equestrian Center in Oak Grove, Kentucky. You can call Jennifer Barr at 931-205-3493 or Marty Barr at 615-586-3220. Friday night show will start at 530. Saturday night it will start at 5. Then trainers will be later in March, 15th through the 18th, four days this year, but located in Cooper Steel Arena in Shelbyville. Contact Melanie Bryant at 931-639-3587 or D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011. Start time each night is 6 p.m. Judges Brent Greider, Dickie Shrivener, and David Sisk. That's going to be a that's going to be a good yeah, good trainer good show, show this year. Yeah. Both these shows are going to be good. good shows. I think both of them shows. I'm really mm -hmm. excited about that first one. Uh, Very excited about it. You know, first time in having it. Yeah, you who's know, behind door one? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Who's behind door one? That, I don't know that judge who's behind door two. That's going to be pretty good. You know, the one that uh, I'm helping put on April the 8th, a little bit different. I'm going to list the judges we got. We got 10. We're going to be drawing these out of a hat. So I'm, I'm going to have a good time, especially with this last name I call on. Yeah. I'm liable to, 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 I'd love to see him judge several times because he's all time critiquing everybody else, yeah. you know. <laughs> You're all right. right. <laughs> Wayne Aby will be one. Um, Sid Baker, Jeanette Balkum, Dean Baird, Joe Fleming, Charles Johnson, Russ Thompson, the man from lower Alabama and California. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Link Webb, Mickey McCormick, and Mr. Dick Peoples. Now, you, you talk to Dick at a horse show, and he'll say, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. Well, we'll so give him his chance. We're going to give him a chance. But I'll tell you what, now, he does have a good eye for oh, a horse. Oh, he got a good eye for a horse. I mean, he, a he, a horse. he can look out there, and he can yeah. see a good one, and he knows it when he sees it. But all these are good judges. Some of them, especially if I had my druthers, there's some that I would pick out to judge the flat shot. Yes. Because they're good at it. And then the others, more performance. But all in all, they're show judges. Yes. They mm -hmm. got their license, and that's what matters. Dick been around for a long time judging horses. Ever since I was a little kid, I remember him judging and stuff like that. You're telling how old he is. Well, People well, accuse him of not being able to sleep. <laughs> Now he's good. All of these are. Link Webb. I've, I've watched oh, Link, Link is a good judge. judge. I've watched Joe Fleming watch all judge. Of them. You got you got a group of good judges right there. Now, there ain't no doubt about it. Now yeah. Mickey McCormick. You know I, I don't I can't remember if I've ever seen Mickey, but I have listened to him when he talks about a horse, and uh, it, it, you, a lot of times you can tell when they're talking about what this horse doing. You, you can yeah. tell. Mickey judge in North Carolina has done a real good job. Well, I know he's a. Mm -hmm. He's very well thought of, and I know I've watched Link Webb judge, yes. and I've watched uh, Russ Thompson judge, yes. and Joe Fleming judge the kids' show last yes. year, and mm -hmm. I thought he did a super job. So, all in all, we got some good judges here, and that's all that matters. Is all of them know horses. That's, that's the biggest thing. That's what you want. That's right. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the first time to show class. So yes. That's the one that I'm really wanting to watch to see who all you know, comes and, and, and participate and, in it. J just see how they do. Yeah. Because they do. Well, uh, as I said, we were going to uh, do some shoeing a little bit later. But before we do that, uh, we did the Lane Leverett uh, barn party. Now, you're going to have one Saturday, right? Yes, we're going to have a little get together uh, that's there. The, what's the date on Saturday? The 18th? The 18th. The, the 18th. But now that's in-house barn party, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, this horse that we have. And camaraderie. Yeah, you know, invite people to come. If they just driving by, you know, come on. Just stop, stop by. Stop by and see us, grab something to eat or something. Going to be mostly kids riding. Yeah, going to be mostly kids. That's <laughs> some, some of them going to be riding that little pony. Yes. I'm, I may decide to, to show off and ride one of mine this weekend. You can't ever tell what I'm liable to do. I'll have CJ video and know, but uh, we will have some good food. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the main thing. He says he can flat cook. We're going to find well, out. I just want to make sure you just don't bring your sleeping bag because you might want to stay after I feed you. Y'all heard that, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see how good he can cook. All right. I have, uh, when we did Lane's, we, we showed one video uh, interview with him. But we've got another one I want you to watch where he wanted to make sure that everybody was thanked. And I don't blame him because a lot of people helped him do yes. it. So let's show Lane Levers' video interview. Tell, tell me about your barn party. I mean, I seen a ton of people there. Oh, uh, just to guess, I, I'm guessing we probably had somewhere around 250 people. Oh, uh, both both days. I mean, it was it was huge, huge. I think it's it one of the best ones I've ever been to, and the turnout of people was man, it was unreal. How many people was there? Well, I know I talked to a bunch that was there, and a lot of them's there looking for that number one coat. I heard that uh, a couple of people bought one. There was, uh, I know there was three or four sold. We sold a couple coats. Uh, we sold a good I Am Jose coat. We sold a Jose coat. I know Jalen Foster sold one. I think Brent Grider might have sold a couple. Uh, 
and then it was some interest in some other stuff that'll probably take place, you know, in days to follow that people have seen over there really liked. Well, I tell you what, I've seen several that I liked. I mean, several that I liked. I've seen some good two-year-olds, some good three-year-olds. I know I, I looked over there, and I, I know Ira Kilburn come down from Kentucky. I believe he's looking for one for his uh, daughter or mm -hmm. granddaughter. They, uh, they just, everybody was out shopping and eating and having a good time, even though it was kind of cold. Yeah. So. You know, Friday night, I think it was 10, 30, or 11 o'clock before we quit riding horse in there, and, I, and the barn was so full that we about had to stop. You couldn't get through there and ride. There was so many people in there. Well, that's what a friend of mine told me, said, said that you, you wouldn't believe it was impossible to get any video because everybody was on top of each other and they was on top mm -hmm. of the horses. And then, you know, the sun come out, so we made the decision to move it outside. Saturday morning, and I think that was a big, big plus. I think it's well, a big deal. Well, it was cool out there. It wasn't freezing cold, but even though it was cold, but it wasn't as bad as you would think. But and, uh, we had we had the, we had the chili and the, and the stew, and we had the open bar, so we you, kept everybody you, warm. You, you, <laughs> well, that, that's a fact. You kept. Now I did not hit your bar, but I did hit your chili pot. That was pretty good chili. You know why? Why? Why we uh, talking about it? People need to remember Ryan Purdom. You know, Tony Edwards and Ryan work together on doing a lot of stuff, but Ryan Purdom does a real job on these catering, these events. He does, he's, Tony does a lot for me, and Ryan does also. You can't go wrong with either one, but old Ryan, he, he hooks it up first class for us. Now. Well, I like that he had the chili and grilled cheese. A mm -hmm. lot of people don't do that, but at my house, 90% of the time we got cornbread, grilled cheese, and chili. And hot dogs, he and had the hot dogs. Well, yep, we had the hot dogs now. But we don't eat the hot dogs, but we eat the chili, the, the cornbread, and the grilled cheese. Well, Lane, I'm well, gonna- Hold on I'm, before you get I, done, now you're rushing. I, 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 I wanna I, bring I, something to your attention I, while we're bring talking. It to, bring it on. Do you realize that these coat, I, I realized this after my coat party the other day. Sonny McCarter, how old Sonny? 93. 93. From 93 to three, you realize how many people over the years we've got in this horse business. It's, and, and you know what it's like out there the other day, it was one big happy family. You know, you got the bombs, you got uh, Sonny McCarter, you got, that's been in it for years. Sister Milligan been in it for years. Uh, Kim Leonard in it, been in it for years. I was sitting looking at all the people that had been in this business for years and years. They were just sitting around watching horses mm -hmm. the other day. And it's just like it was the first day they ever seen him. I know, I know. You talk about 93, Dr. Hill was 93 when he won his last World Grand Championship. Yes, sir. Or World Championship. Yep, sure. And the youngest World Champion, do you know how old it was? Uh-uh. Three. Three. You know who it was? Uh-uh. Little Sims. Really? That's a fact, <laughs> Little Sims won it. Oh, uh, and, and another thing, why you got us here talking about the preview, if it's all right with you, yeah. I got a few people to thank. Yeah, you go ahead. First of all, Jake Jacobs, Spencer Benedict, and them brought True Blue out there for us. Made one, one sure enough good exhibition. He bad to the bone. Oh, uh, I'm telling you, he was smoking. And, he and, sold, he sold some stud fees off of that. Yes, and uh, uh, that's always he's a crap man. He's a he's a people. Uh, he might be the people's champ. I don't know. Everybody loves he's him, and they love R. Now. They love R. M. I'm talking about their class acts, but. I really want to say thank you to Jake and, and everybody for doing that. You know, it, that's a lot to ask, bring your horse out there in that kind of weather and this, and he's a contender for the World Grand Championship. And uh, I know it's a lot to ask of them, and they did it for me, and I, I appreciate that. And then, uh, you know, I got Jeff Faulkner, Bobby Blue, and Joe Link, and uh, customers of mine here that this year, when I got ready to do this party, uh, in years to past, you know, I, I do it all pretty much myself, but this year they all they all pitched in and helped support it, you know, financially and helped me get it ready and, and worked half the night on Thursday and and you know, so when we put these parties on, it takes a it takes a, a herd of people to get it done. My guys in here, Eli, I can't say enough for him, he works day and night. Uh my guys that help in here at the barn, and, and while I while we're doing this, I wanted to tell everybody, because you don't always get to say thank you to everybody, but I wanted to tell them thank you, because without them, we couldn't put on the event like we do. 
Well, Jake and Jacobs and, helps a lot. Yes, he's, sir. He's helping at the show that I'm helping with down in Lynchburg. Oh, Jake's the, tracks Jake's the best now. Class <laughs> act all the way around. I mean, he is he is top of the line. But um, just I want to say thank you to everybody that helped put this on because it, it means a lot. It goes a long way for the whole industry. Uh, everybody gets to come out and enjoy it, you know. And you know, you you have it, and you want everybody to have a good time, but you got to have it set up for everybody to have you a good time. It. And it take it takes a lot to do it. Time and work, buddy. Yep. Elbow grease. Yep. Gets it done. It gets it done. But I wanted to thank a few of them people for helping with it because that's what it takes. Well, I know a lot of people said they really appreciated what you did out there, and I know I did. It was a great preview, great 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 barn party. Every, everybody seemed to have a good time. You know, uh, so, I love yeah. I love this industry and I love the people in it. Uh, this industry is a blessing to all of us. It has been for many years. You know, the old saying is, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. That's a fact. I, I don't work. <laughs> you I, just have I, a good time. <laughs> I, have a, I have a great life because of this industry, and uh, it, it means it means a lot to us. And, you know, what little we get a lot out of it. What little bit we can do to give back is just a small drop in the pond, you know. Well, I know everybody enjoyed herself. And I know, I know I did. I know CJ did. That's the main thing. You know, we've seen a lot of young stars. We'll see what they, where they come out. Trainer shows around the corner. Ain't that far off, and it's gonna be here. Gonna be on us. Penny Royals coming up. We're gonna have some good shows this year. Yeah, I mean, it, first of March, it's here. Show yeah. season's back around. Well, I'm gonna get out of here, then, buddy. Yes, sir. But thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. You thank have you a for good having day. me. Bye. That was a that was a good barn. Oh yeah, that was a good barn. We're, we're, we're gonna good. have a better time though. We're, we're <laughs> gonna have more camaraderie. Yeah, I guess. All right, we're, we're gonna. You've heard the stories, and everybody always talks about all the nails in a horse's foot. They they talk about everything. The lady up in Knoxville on the news talked about boats and a horse's leg. Uh, just. Things like that, and, and I guess my problem, Jerry, is there's a lot of people that believe it. Yes, because they don't know no better. They ain't never seen it. They just hear. They just hear people talk about yeah. it. Yeah, and they take it for truth. Truth. That's right. And, and it's just, I mean, it, it it gets ridiculous when you think about it. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this at the USDA because at one time they were bad about showing that package that had all those nails in it, and very misleading. Yes. If if they show how the package is put together, and uh, later on, not today, but we're going to show how a package is made, one flat at a time, and what makes it. But today we're going to show them shoeing a horse, and show exactly how many nails goes into that horse's foot, which it's it's ridiculous. If you watch right here. Now he he's stripping the horse now. He's taking the package off the horse. First comes the band, which I refer to some people as those shoelaces. Yes. Period. But you're gonna find it once he does that, gets everything done, that horse is still gonna have a pad on. And that's that's what people don't realize is all the stuff that's done to take care of these horses. And you, you can tell what he's doing right there. Yeah, you know, he just getting ready to take that shoe off. He just kind of getting them nails and knocking the head off of them so he can just pull that shoe off real easy so he won't tear the horse's foot up and, right. and everything else. You know, them horses, people talk about you putting boats and all that stuff on the, you know, and, and all that. If a horse is lame on his foot, he ain't gonna walk right. No, that's what they don't understand. He, he it's it just like stick a rock in your shoe and try to walk. That's right. Uh, you, you'll understand what we mean, and you'll understand it quick. And this, I, I see one woman talk about him driving nails in that horse's bottom of his foot. Try doing that to your foot. It's the same thing with a horse. You do stuff like that, you're gonna hurt the horse. Now he, what he's he taking doing, a clinch cutter and knocking the nails up. Yep. Well, he can pull them nails right out of that horse's feet real easy and don't break the horse's foot off. I mean, just like you going and getting your feet done at a, at a nail salon. Yeah. It's the same thing. He following it. 
And there's one thing that, that a lot of people don't, and we did this with Sir, is we built the package for him. Yes. And Woody Woodruff come out, watched him, went through, and, and he made a couple of alterations, but then he found the package that for him is just like I go up here to Clayton Shoes. I may try on two or three different yeah. pair of shoes before I find one that I like, or I may go over French's try on a pair of boots. That's the old way right there, yes. buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some some farriers still do it the old way. Some of them use a grinder. Some it's just according to which one they are. Which way you gonna do it? Hmm. Hmm. So you're taking that clinch cutter and knocking the nails up out of that horse's foot right there, so it won't break. Well, that those knob. are the ones that he's getting right now. Are the ones that uh, are holding on the starter pad? Yeah, mm -hmm. the foot pad. Yeah, he'll. He'll unloosen that foot pad before it's over with, and you'll see there'll still be a, a pad on that horse afterwards. And when, when he puts them back together, it's going to be the same thing. All actuality that's in that horse's foot, you have three to four nails on one side and three or four nails on the other side. And that's, that's, all the, that's all that's uh, in the foot. That's all that's in that horse's foot. And that's going to be so... No matter if it's flat shot, shot performance, performance, if trail, trail riding or whatever, it's gonna be the same thing. And he's taking that off, and he'll pull that shoe. That whole shoe will come off. He's just getting the dirt out of his foot now, at the bottom of the, bottom of the package. And he'll take that screwdriver and stick it between the package and the hoof, and he'll pull, and that shoe will pop right off. That's it. And he got a packing to help protect the bottom of that horse's foot. See what it's amazing the way that they do things now. He, what he's fixing to do, he's marking it because they'll mark them pads yes. right or left. To make sure he put your shoes on just right on the right foot. Yeah, because what he did, now they're putting in the starter pad. Yeah. I just like a regular shoe. That's like right. a regular shoe like you put on a, a trail riding horse or whatever. That's the only thing that's actually hooked to that horse's foot. But you'll see that horse got four nails on each side there. And that's it as far as that goes into the foot. When I listen to, when I listen to some, especially on the news, and I would think that they would at least do a little research, uh, go to a barn and watch it being done, well, that's the only way they can learn if, you, if they go and see it. I like putting that nail on that horse's foot. That horse is not going to let you drive that nail all the way up in his foot and nope. it hurt him. Nope. And he'd be snatching that man all around that place if he, if he was hurting. That's it. But people, I don't know, that's what gets me. The Nowadays, our news, see right there is your starter pad now. Yep. Four nails on each side, that's all that goes into the horse's foot. When they put the package on, it's going to be nailed to that starter to pad. To that starter pad. And you put the band on, it, like you said, your shoelace, to keep right. it tied on there so it won't, so it won't pull off. Well, see that? When, when the lady in Knoxville, when she was talking, she talked as though she knew exactly what she was talking about. But anybody that knows horses and knows these horses, when she said that, I said, I can't believe that she would say something like that. But she believed it. Yeah. But you got a lot of people, Jerry, that are talking about stuff and they don't know what you're talking about. That's like me if I try to tell somebody how to fly an airplane. I don't know nothing about flying no airplanes. I ain't so, listening to you. You know, and that's what I'm saying. So well, if you ain't never seen it and you ain't never flew it, you know, you can't talk about it if you don't if you ain't never been there to Well, you know some things though, Jerry, in all honesty now, I'm just being honest. I'm like this. Someone tells me something. I kinda listened. I may believe it. And then I may question it. Then I'll go in and ask questions. Yes. Or I'll look it up on the internet. I'll do something I want to know. Well, some people just say whatever they want to, and people take it as a fact. That's right. You, when it ain't. 
you see right there, he's nailing those nails are going down through the starter pad into the package. So for all you people that believed all those nails was in that horse's foot, here's the truth. Video does not lie. That horse has eight nails in his foot. It makes no difference how many nails went into the package. And one, I forget which VMO it was, was arguing with one trainer that he put all those nails in that package to increase the weight. I said, what difference does that make? That's right. I mean, that's silly. It's a silly statement. It's worse than the three cells thick. Well, this right here is, is a good way for you to look. Now, what he's doing, he's measuring to make sure that this horse is shod correctly and is within the measurements allowed for the package. Yes. We have more rules and regulations to follow than any breed out there that I know of. And we follow them closer than the other breeds follow theirs. And we're scrutinized more than any of them. And it, it just, sometimes it, it makes you want to go out in front of uh, one of the mainstream news outlets, just stand there and scream at them. If you ever want to get educated about these horses, all you got to do is go to one of these barns and, uh, and just watch. And watch mm -hmm. these horseshoes. And these horseshoes will be glad to explain it to you. Well, they'll explain it to you. Our problem is this. And this happened several years ago. lady comes in and she wants to do a truthful story on the Tennessee walking horse. Larry Lowman said, that's a mistake. I remember it well. But she had convinced several people, including Celebration, to let her come in video and do all this. The trainers was willing to work with her. And when she got done, she did a video, put it out there, and twisted everything she saw, she twisted and into the attack mode towards the walking horse. Yes. Everything she did. And, and it just, I don't know. I, I, I sat there and I watched. She never, there never was any truth to anything that she said. She twisted it. Well, I mean, that just, that's, that's people, you know. I'm from Louisiana. I can go down to Louisiana and I can talk about you and, tell you and say how bad a person Jerry Harris is. And if they don't know you, they'll believe it. And, but then once they get to know you, they say, well, you know, Jerry might have lied about that. He ain't as bad as he said he was. No, he was, he was telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's the same way with these horses, you know. Um, before somebody can convince me something, show me. That's it. That's the Missouri in me. That's I right. Guess. Show show me that that person that that horse is wrong. And if you can show me and can prove well, it to me now, yourself, that nail right there was put in there to keep that band from, from riding up, up onto yes. that horse's foot. <laughs> that's another thing that they. Precautions are taken to protect this horse in every way. And that band got to be a half inch from that cornet band. That's fact. So they, these are things that that people don't ever think about. They, they just assume, and the worse you can make it sound, the better the news likes yes. it. They, I don't know what's wrong with them. They think they can't sell good news. Them shoes right there, them front shoes and back shoes, help protect a horse's feet more than any shoe that's out there. Ain't nothing can get up under, with them pads on it, nothing can get up on the bottom of that horse's foot to stick him in the bottom of his feet or whatever. It helped protect the bottom of his feet. Yeah. You know, I weighed my boots, my boots I wear in yeah. the barn, and uh, they weighed two and a half pounds a piece. And if you weigh the horse's Put that horse may weigh three, three and a half pounds, yeah. maybe. Which, but that horse weighs a good eight hundred, eight to well, eight hundred, eight to nine hundred pounds, pounds more than I do. That's right. So they don't look at it. It's it's like kind of they they attack us because of the eight or the six ounce action device. They say that heavy chain. 
But most people wear watches that to them is heavier on them than that six ounce action device is on a Tennessee walking horse. But they don't ever stop to think about that because it does not fit into what they want people to believe. And then we, we can go from there, we can start talking about all the people that come out against the Tennessee walking horse. Well, if you look and go down their names of people that go out and do advertisements and make videos and point the finger at the Tennessee walking horse, and that includes Clint C., Marty Irby, the whole bunch of them. Marty barred from the celebration because he tried to take a name, uh, which was the, the World Grand Championship. Yes. He tried to do that, got caught. Then he held it up that if the celebration would do this, he'd let them have it back. They got it back anyway. Then you got Clancy. He, he was guilty of all kinds of stuff. But these are the people that come and attack us, yes. or the ones that we didn't want nothing to do with. Well, the ones that w they was in the horse business at one point in time, but then they couldn't handle it and they got out of it. I know. You know. And they, they want to say it's and everybody's fault but their own. That's right. But it ain't nobody's fault but their own. You know, I'm, I'm like this. If I don't pay my bills, that's my fault. That's right. It ain't your fault. It's my fault. It wasn't the trainer's fault if one of those didn't pay his bills. It was his fault for not paying his bills. It's just like other people. When they break the rules, they want their, their defense is, will they do this? It, it, I had a conversation with a trainer that was serving a suspension. And he said, well, this guy did this. And I said, were you guilty? Well, this other guy did. I said, but were you guilty? And I had to ask him three or four times. And finally, I just said, just tell me, were you guilty or not? And he said, well, yes, I was guilty. And he got caught. That's right. If It's, it's kind of like us out here. We're speeding up and down the highway. Some going to get caught and some ain't. Do we have people that break the rules? Yeah. I don't know of any activity or sport that doesn't have people that will do something from putting a little grease on a ball yeah. to letting air out of a football to different things to gain an advantage. But when they get caught, that's when they want to blame everybody, everybody else, else for their actions. Well, the biggest thing of it is if you get if somebody do something wrong, you got to go after that person, not the whole industry. That's it. And that's, that's and you penalize that person. That's right. You go it ain't the him. horse's fault. It ain't everybody else's fault. It's that person that got caught and got and done something. If that person's breaking the rules, Rule, you, you go get after him. him. And you, I don't want to go to jail because you broke the law. That's right. But at the same time, I would appreciate you going to jail if I broke the law. But that's on me. And, and there's a lot of people out here that they, hey, you let's know, this, get them all. This but, horse, you know, make a lot of living for a lot of people out there. A lot of people. Well, and this horse that brought this brought a lot of people along a lot of different places. Well, Jerry, you, you have to take it further than that. Now, I mean, the walking horse supports a lot of families. That's right. He sends a lot of kids through college. We have scholarship programs. We have all this. We have fundraisers for everything. The horse show that we're doing. The Penny Royal. Look the money where he goes. Look what all the trainers do for keep yeah. kids, everybody. We got the Cancer Foundation, what they do. All these horse shows are not to make money for one person out here. They're to help a lot of people. That Cancer Foundation helps a ton of people in Bedford County. But we have one, we used to be one up in Virginia for the Shriners. And, and this is what the walking horse does. It supports all of them, supports the families, supports the businesses. Just think of all the businesses that the walking horse affects. Tax shops, clothing shops, dry cleaners, gas stations, fast food. Motels. You got it. All and over the place, you know. It helps support me and helps support my family and everything else. Well, that's, and that's without what, this walking horse, I don't know, you know where would I be today. That's it. Well, where would any of us be? Yeah. I mean, we. I guess what we're trying to say is we're taking this show, trying to show what we can do 
what the walking horse does that's positive, it's not all negative. Yes. We'll be right back after we take this short pause for our commercials. <laughs> I can reach one, so uh, get your catalog from me or sit in your cell with the rules. Want everybody to know the rules of the games we're here today? So, 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 or MG. So, Jamari, there's your black stud coat by I am three time world grand champion of the world. I am Jose, is his daddy. There's opportunity. The bid, 27. Where you at, Mark? 26, 27, 27. Last call. When you get down to it, done. So, so, you bought it for 2600 here, and then 56 and a half. 5600, got a little bit of a five here, six. So, 5500, you bought it 5500. And so, 100 bar call, take it. Oh, 100, you bought it. So, 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 you break one, break the next one. That's the real deal, guys, right here. Opportunity is knocking right here, Adam Johnson. Here's a horse to take it home. Right at Sid is, but so, 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 you bought it. Six-time world champion in the amateur and open competition, four-time amateur world grand champion, and 2019 world grand champion. Standing at stud for Joanne Dow at Fantasy Farm in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Call 931-389-6983 for breeding information. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> You know, Jerry, we're fixing to go into these uh, shoeing different sho rules for, for your shoeing division. One thing was brought up just now about the love for these horses, uh, like feeding them carrots and all of this. But some people, they just, I mean, they, if something happens to one of their horses, they're tore all to pieces. Oh, yes. Had one lady say, you know, I really need to go to the doctor, but my horse got to go to the bed first. first. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we're going to go over some shoeing regulations and show some of the things like your flat shot shoeing rules. Here is the country pleasure. And you can put in some on this, buddy. Your country pleasure, your maximum for the shoe, I want everybody to listen to this, is three eighths by four fourths. And it's strap steel aluminum keg shoe. And it can be maximum is one half in inch in length and small spots on heels. Forward heels allowed. Explain that. Well, is the, where the heels is bend up underneath the horse's foot right there. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they, 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 right here is a country pleasure. And as you can see, that right there is what we go trail riding with, folks. So this shoe right here is really what the horse would wear is a regular keg shoe yes. is what they call it. Just a flat old keg shoe that can be aluminum or it can be steel. I mean, your regular quarter horse wear a shoe like that right there. That's the oh, shoe yeah. he have them on. Well, there's not a whole lot of difference in in the the shoes as as you go up to different divisions. Yes. But I also I want people to watch as we change the shoe. Watch the gait of the horse, because it's going to change too. And we're still in country pleasure now, and that's what this right here is what a lot of people do on their trail rides. Yes. Just walking along. He's going to run and walk there. You'll find more kids doing that than adults, though. And some they name that class that because it's like if you're riding out through the country, yeah. the, the horse is easy going, you know, don't have a whole lot of action, but, you know, but shaking his head and walking behind. Yes, that's it. Just moving forward. But and every it, one of these horses that you're going to see going to do the same thing behind and his head going to be shaking. Well, they'll also have three feet on the ground yes, all the uh -huh. time. They'll never have four. They'll never be two, though they'll have four on there. But when they're moving, they got three on the ground and one in the air. The next one 
is our trail pleasure. Now this is a maximum three eighths by three quarters. And one and one half inch turn back. So you got, and it cannot exceed seven eighths inch. So this one's a little different, but look at the gate. A little bit more animated. A little bit more animated, a little bit more weight with a shoe. The country pleasure is, not, when, when you get there, it's not that great a, a deal for the, the action because you're wanting that smooth ride. Yes. This ride here is a class, and it shows a little bit more animation in the walk, and that's because the shoe's just a little bit bigger. Not a lot, but a little. These are, these are classes right here that woe classes, PETA classes, they are packed to the hilt. Yes. A lot of these same horses show here, go over there. The difference to me is the major difference is the inspection processes get a lot more intense. Yes. Show does a great job in, in very strict in their inspections. Yeah, they do a real good job. I, I attend a, an inspection clinic this last weekend, and I, I learned a lot just sitting there just watching and looking. I'll tell you what, them inspection clinics now, they're tough. Yes. I know. Uh, and they're I very serious on teaching them exactly how to inspect the horses and how to go over them. How to get it done. Yes. Curtis Pittman does a good job, too. Yes. Now, show does Curtis a great does job. A job. Curtis yeah. Pittman's another now. He does a fine job. His group. It helps when you have inspectors that really and truly care for the industry, the industry and watch yes, right. that are not there just for the dollar. They're there to see something done, and they, they care about it. And that's a good thing. Light shot is the next one from Trail Pleasure. You go to Light Shot. This one right here, there you go. A little more animation. Little more animation. One half by one inch, cold or hot steel, or aluminum. Maximum one, one half inch turn back. And the caulker barn, barn cannot, I can't, I can't pronounce that hardly, exceed one and one eighth inch. But see, the, there's more animation here in this class. And then Bending from the there. the knees a little bit more and everything else. I mean, that's. Well, you got your classic park. Each one of these classes, they get more and more animated leading up to the, to the big one to your performance padded classes. But now these, these right here are stair steps to, to me that people could come in to this industry and start out in that country pleasure and just gradually move their self up. Just keep going. Yes. Like climbing a ladder. And I know I've seen at your barn, I've seen the flat shot, park performance, then the padded. Yes. Once you get into the padded classes, that's when the, the animation really starts, and it, you can tell a big difference. You recognize that old boy, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's a good one. Hey, I can still remember when he... Well, uh, went down to Howard the first time. He said, I'm thinking about it. I said, it might be a smart move, buddy. <laughs> and he, he went ahead and did it. He's been there ever since. All right, from there we go into the next step up. Now, this, this right here is, you can say, it's part pleasure uh, to me now. This is me. Part pleasure, plantation pleasure, uh, classic pleasure. <laughs> or classic park pleasure, but you can see the animation is a lot different. It yes. just keeps getting more and more animated, more and more walk to it. 
But all of these have shoeing guides that you have to adhere to. That's what the gentleman was doing when he was measuring a while ago on the pads to make sure it was right. These shoes on these horses get weighed or measured the same way. Yes. And if there's restrictions on the weight of the shoe and they get pulled, you could be in bad trouble. trouble. But a yep. lot of times, used to, they could, they could look at them and they could tell the difference. Some of them get a this little one here was This is the classic? Classic. Well, when you go classic or park. Well, the plantation. classic is a regular plantation. Is the regular plantation shoe you. is a classic. And then you have your other park pleasure class, and that's more of a, more of a weighted, like a weighted tonsil class. shoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, see that horse right there? He, he's walking and reaching more. Yeah. These horses with these flat shoes, you can ride them either way with English saddle or Western saddle on them. Well, I tell you what, I, I like the Western, but I, the English is good too. The, to me, the difference in the classes is where the head is. Yes, where the head's at. More of your English horses are going to have an up, tucked in more of a head. The Western horse is going to drop the head just a little bit more. You know, not real low, but I mean, well, that horse right there is flat walking. Yeah. See, this head, he's not real high. Yeah. Not, he's not real low, but he's, he's not high. Yeah. Hired knows how to get it done. Yeah. He didn't get that white hair for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just, just the way it goes. All right, we got more flat shot horse video. You got park performance. Now that park performance, it has it's got the one pad. Yeah. Well, it's got a flat pad and a, and a wedge and a plantation shoe on the bottom with an action device. Right. All these classes. If you watch, the animation has increased. Every time they change the shoe, the animation increases up. You get a little bit more all the way around. I tell you what, dude, when you get to, when you really look at it, <laughs> These these horses right here are pretty exciting. Yeah, they are. You you get a bunch of them out there going against each other, you're gonna have people standing on their heads. And used to, that right there was it. Yeah. You go back and look at our old videos. Uh, go back in '66 and watch uh, Betty Sane. Shaker wasn't doing much no. more than that right there. You know, each one of them horses is real good in their division. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, the, the breeding has just elevated this horse to another standard, really. Because now we've, we've got a bred and crossbred and looked at the different, which, which mare would go with which stud. stud and, yeah. And the one, how would you make it better and better? And... This right here is a finished product. And we get better. It's just like when you look at the way they drive in the back, you come some of these coats when they're born are squatting and walking. Yes. Like Billy Gray used to say, if God will send them to me with a back end, I can train them on the front, front end. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. the way it goes. So. It's just whichever way that you look at it, you just work for it. Our next one's going to get into the performance division, but before we do that, I'm going to let you do it. We'll be right back <laughs> after these messages. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse. 
But I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. And we've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now, for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up to host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411, and see if I can save you money on your communication. You know, my friends think I know everything there is to know about the walking horse industry. And I do know a lot, but not everything. I do know one thing, though. My father told me I could find out anything I needed to know about this industry by going to walkinghorsereport.com. And you know what? He was right. Everything from single night shows to multi night shows, sibling and progeny searches, rider cup standing, stallion reports. They even have a calendar of shows for the entire year and all the current news. It's all right there at the tip of my fingers when I go to walking horsereport.com. You know, they could do it themselves, but I don't think I'm going to tell them. Let's just keep them wondering how I know so much. All right, welcome back. I got you last yes, time. You did. I did. Got I got you. You right. one on me. We're getting into the <laughs> We're getting into the performance division now. And this is where you've got your padded horses. You're going to get something different from all of them. They, they've got different ways of going, but every one of them is going to be animated. They're going to have a head shake. They're going to walk and reach. Some of them are going to have a longer stride than the others because when you look at the, the performance, let's see how many divisions we got. We got... Well, part performance, which that's one of them. Yeah. But you got your pony division, you've got your uh, juvenile division. Juvenile divisions. All these are different horses now. You've got 15 two and under, 15 two and over. You've got your specialty classes. Show pleasure. You got your show pleasure to where you don't have to wear a tail set. Right there's an example. Yes. Right there. You see the way that horse is going. See the way that horse is shaking its head. But look at its gait. Now look at the way this horse is shaking his head. It, every, every animal we got, when you look at them, it's hard to say. Well, you will hear him say, that horse right there goes like Armsdale for real. Or yeah. that horse goes like Jose. Or that horse goes like Triple Threat used to. I mean, each one of them got, some of them got a faster head shake. Some of them got a slower head shake, and some of them just flat sit there yeah. and walk. On the shoeing on this horse right here, they measure the shoeing on there. You have to have two inches of pad with four inches. If you have four inches of toe, you can have two inches of pad. And it's got to be an inch difference in between the heel and the toe. Yeah, but that can be a mixture of flats and wedges. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the wedges come in different lengths. Yes. So it's just everything is... is is what fits the horse. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. And sometimes you'll hear an owner say, well, he's a whole lot happier in that class. We got this class right here, the fine horns class. Some yeah. horses is real good in that buggy, yeah. pulling that fine horns. Well, that, there's one in there that, that shows under saddle and in fine harness. That's in Ted's image. That's him right there. Yeah. yeah. And he, he is good both ways. But a lot of people don't understand. You may get one and come up and have a package, full package on him, and then drop him back down to a part pleasure or part performance, a flat and a wedge, and that horse would be unreal. Yes. And he performs better there. You may take and put a bigger shoe on him. And him do real good, or you may make that package smaller that is not quite as big, and him be better. So it it takes a good rider, a good trainer, yes, and a blacksmith or a farrier that knows what they're doing, that can do it every time. 
his horse has to be comfortable to hit the ground for him to work and right. And it is. If he's not comfortable, just like you're wearing shoes, if you ain't comfortable in your shoes, you're not going to walk right. And some of them, that's why we say a lot of, of what, 10, 15 percent of these horses actually make a great performance horse. Yes. Or a padded horse. A lot of them go right back down because they're a whole lot better flat shot. Yep. They're more suited for flat shot. And it, the trainer, like, well, like what Jerry Beatty told us the other day. What was it he said? He said, this horse right here, great nature, not going to make a performance horse, great country pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. I mean, that, that's it. It's just the way the horse is. Well, they got the different divisions that they do the best in. I mean, they just like humans, you know. You got they still a human, but you got, you know, basketball players, football players, That's or whatever. It. They still walking horses, but you got flat shot, trail pleasure, country pleasure, and padded. It's according to what you do best. Yep. And people need to realize that it's it's not about what what it, it's about the the owner, the trainer, everybody working together for what's best for the horse. Of and once everybody realizes that, we'll be a whole lot better off. But why keep a horse in a performance class and he better on a flat shoe? Doesn't pay attention. I mean, why put a horse on a, that got better on a performance shoe and keep him on a flat shoe? That's it. You know, you want to put him in where he does his best job at. And that, that, where he's the happy. Trainer, he yeah, that's so the trainer's you, job to yeah, find that. Where he's happy. And most of, most of the time, it works out. You see that horse right there going through his ears up, shaking. Uh -huh. I mean, he's he's happy what he's doing. Getting it done. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, you wouldn't believe the horses, these older horses that you retire, and he can't go to that horse show and how he runs around that stall mm -hmm. every time that trailer pulls up, and he knows the other horse is going to the shows and showing off and stuff like that. They really like that. I mean, a friend of mine told me a story about a, a performance mare that uh, said that this lady bought it and had it out in the pasture, and he asked her about it and said, well, she's losing a lot of weight, so he went and bought her. Said he was just sitting in there and said, the old horse said barely eat nothing. Said he just decided to try something, so he took this old package and tacked it back on her, said that horse perked up, started eating, and his daughter started showing them juvenile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, People don't tell me these, these horses are smart. Oh, they it's are just smart. like when we went through the barn, those two of mine that you've got down at the knowledge, they're right there at the gate when I walk up. They I don't hear your car coming and they come running up and down that stalk and they know you're there. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, we're going to see everybody Saturday. We're yes. going to feed you. We don't know how much we're going to feed you, but Jerry says he's going to feed us good. Yes. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see you. Well, I'll see you before Saturday. That'll work. But I want to see how good a cook you are, too. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Hope you learned something. And always defend the horse. Yeah, have a good day. Bye. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, peace, start talking.